Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about reaction time for uh, measuring motor skill performance. Uh, so reaction time refers to how long it takes a person to prepare and initiate a movement. Okay, so it, it ends when the movement begins. It's the time uh, between the stimulus or the signal to uh, begin whatever that movement is until the actual initiation of the movement or the initiation of the response. Uh, does not include the movement, only the time before the movement. So that go signal or the stimulus to start could be a light, a sound, a movement of another person, a ball coming at you, um, a car pulling out in front of you, whatever it might be. So it could be any kind of signal that initiates a response. And so the reaction time is that time from the signal until the actual movement begins. <clears throat> So the reason we care about reaction time when we're measuring performance uh, is it can help us assess how quickly the person can initiate the movement and it can indicate other characteristics that are related to performing that skill. Um, so it helps us learn about how environmental context affects the ability of that person to react and perform that skill. Um, so like if the person might need to perform that skill in different environmental contexts, then it's helpful to test reaction time in those different contexts uh, to see where they excel and where they have weakness so that you can work on improving that. Uh, it also helps us assess the ability of an individual to anticipate the required action and know when to initiate it. Um, it makes me think about, you know, that game where you have your hands under and somebody else puts the hands over and then you're going as fast as you can to try and slap the top of their hands, you know, and you're doing this. So the person who's on top and is trying to pull their hands away to not get tapped, you know, hopefully not hurt, <laughs> but you're trying not to get to slap, get slapped by the person underneath. Um, so they know what the action is, but the test really is their ability to anticipate when they should execute that action and then be able to initiate it at the right time to be able to pull away before the bottom person is successful and is able to actually slap your hands. Um, it also gives information about decision making um, because it's during that reaction time, during that interval between the stimulus and the initiation of the movement, that the person not only is having to, to um, kind of process and initiate the movement, but they're making decisions. Like they have to make a decision based on something that just happened. Are they going to pass the ball or shoot? Um, so they're making those decisions quickly. Uh, it's a way to examine how a person interacts with the performance environment during preparation for the action. So there's a difference between practicing free throws by yourself or practicing free throws with a distracting you know, crowd who doesn't want you to be successful. So those are two different environments. Um, and so reaction time and execution of the movement is going to be different depending on that environment. Okay, so movement time and response time. Movement time is what starts when reaction time ends. So reaction time is over when the movement is initiated. So the time from initiation of the movement to its completion, that's the movement time. Response time includes reaction time and the movement time. So the response time is from the time of the signal or the stimulus to act until the entire movement is complete. That whole thing is the response time. Uh, now, interestingly, reaction time and movement time are usually independent. So they, um, like a fast reaction time doesn't mean you're gonna be good at or fast at the movement. So your movement time could be long even if your reaction time was short and vice versa. Um, so those are two relatively independent features and independent skills. And so it's helpful to measure them separately, depending on what the skill is that you're working on. Um, because if you want to inc increase or improve, not increase, you would decrease, but if you want to improve response time, um, it's helpful to know what reaction time is versus movement time, because then you can see which one needs to be improved and which one is going to have a greater effect on your total response time. Okay, so there are a couple different situations here. Simple reaction time involves only one signal and requires only one movement. Okay, so that's like in an experimental setting, the light turns on, you press the button. 
So you don't have to be thinking about multiple types of movements or resp responses to that stimulus. And there aren't multiple stimuluses that you have to distinguish between. It's simple, light turns on, push the button. Then choice reaction time is when there are different signals and each signal requires a different response. Okay, so that would be like the blue light turns on, press the button on the left, red light turns on, press the button on the right. Okay, so in that case, there are different signals or different kind of go signs. And depending on which one comes on, you need to respond with a different action. And then finally, discrimination reaction time is when there are different signals, but only one response. So that could be like, there are a bunch of different signals, but you ignore all of them except for this important one. And that's what triggers the response. Um, <clears throat> So like in that example, blue light turns on, press the button. Red, green, or yellow lights turn on, don't press the button. So you're having to wait and determine which color is the light and does that color initiate a response and then you generate that response. Okay, so reaction time interval components. So the reaction time itself, we can break down into two parts. Now we can only, I, we can only observe these two parts with the use of EMG. So we need sensors to be able to read the muscle activity that's happening during reaction time um, because there's no visible movement. There's no visible change uh, during the reaction time. But if we can track the EMG, we can see what the motor activity is in that muscle. So the pre-motor time is before there is a response in the muscle. So it's a quiet interval. It's first, it's right after the stimulus or the go signal. Um, and it goes up until there is muscle activity. So there's no muscle activity during that initial part. Um, so that is a measure of the receipt and transmission of information from the environment through the nervous system to the muscle. Okay, so we have to perceive the go signal or whatever the stimulus is in the environment. We have to perceive it. The nervous system has to then transmit whatever is going to be the, the signal for the response to the muscular system. So that all takes time for that whole perception and decision-making process to take place. And then for that motor command to be sent out to the muscle. So during that kind of window, there's no actual muscle activity yet because the muscles didn't receive the signal yet. Once the muscle receives the signal, then motor time begins. That's the second part of the reaction time. Um, that's the time from increase in muscle activity until the beginning of the actual movement. So this is still reaction time before the movement has initiated. But before the movement initiates, the muscles begin to activate. Um, and because they have to activate to a certain extent to be able to produce enough force to actually cause movement and overcome inertia of the limb that has to move. Um, and it's not immediate. We have to wait for the whole process at the neuromuscular junction um, and then for the calcium to flood the muscle cell and so on. Um, so we have to wait. It takes time for that whole process to, to take place um, and to be able to actually generate force in that muscle before there's actually a visible movement of the limb in response. So that is the motor time where there is activity before the movement actually is generated. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.